I'll, uh, I'll defer because I don't okay. want to just take over somebody's meeting. Well, you're not taking over anybody's meeting. This is your meeting. Uh, we invited some veterans, and uh, they had some good questions. And we have the media here as well. And we wanted Congressman Horsford to know that we welcome him to our meeting. And we wanted to have it small enough so you can ask those questions and get some answers. This is the man with the answers. Congressman, all yours. Good morning, everybody. First, uh, again, I want to thank all of you for your service uh, to our country. I know uh, this uh, last Monday we celebrated uh, Memorial Day for those uh, who gave their ultimate sacrifice um, and, uh, you know, in serving our country and they paid their, their, their life uh, for our freedom. Um, and I just want to, again, commend all of you for, for what you do and uh, continuing to serve our, our country. We appreciate it. Um, and, and I'm here uh, because I want to hear from you on any issues uh, that you're experiencing as, as, as vets um, and any other issue uh, that you want to uh, ask me about or, or talk to me about. Uh, just a couple of quick uh, general updates. Um, following uh, our formation of our uh, Veterans Advisory Council um, here in the district, which I know we had some representatives from Perum uh, on uh, that meeting. I met with Secretary uh, Shinseki, uh, the head of the VA, um, for a meeting in Washington, D.C., um, where I was able to bring to his attention a number of the issues that uh, you all shared with me as, as uh, you know, members of the veterans community. Uh, and of course, among those were the backlog issue. Uh, so I want to talk to you about where we are on that and what effort is being done. Um, we talked about uh, the veterans uh, services um, within the hospital and the need to uh, support rural veteran health care services. Um, and we you know, have talked to John Bright who I know is now gone from uh, as the director and the new uh, acting director is in place and you know she is um, following through on some of those uh, uh, issues that we've heard from. And then the third issue is uh, transportation. I actually uh, rode uh, the RTC bus uh, earlier this week uh, of a portion of my Clark County district and uh, went on the route that our vets take from downtown to the Veterans Hospital. And so I was able to see firsthand, again, some of the challenges with um, transportation and the need for additional transportation services. So uh, let me just touch on kind of where we are on those three areas and then open it up for any questions that you have, okay? <coughs> Excuse me, I'm getting over a cold. Um, on the VA backlog issue, you know, uh, the VA claims for our region are done out of Reno, and Reno has uh, one of the longest uh, time periods uh, to process claims. Uh, I believe it's over uh, 600 days, um, and it's completely unacceptable. And we, the entire Nevada delegation, uh, wrote a letter to uh, the regional uh, administrator under the VA following our meeting with Secretary, my meeting with Secretary Shinseki, where we called on them to uh, come up with a new plan uh, to uh, address the backlog issue um, out of Reno. Okay, so that's uh, number one. Secondly, uh, Congresswoman Dina Titus has introduced a bill, uh, which is now pending before Congress, uh, which would uh, basically pay as the claim uh, review has been approved. So that we aren't waiting for a complete review of a claim, but that as claims are submitted and reviewed and there's approval, that payments uh, can be made uh, under the VA benefits. And so that has bipartisan support uh, and all of us in the delegation uh, will be working with Congresswoman Titus uh, on that very important uh, legislation. Secretary Shinseki issued an order 
recently following our meeting where he uh, is calling for basically, and I don't know that this is the exact term, so for the press, uh, I don't want to misquote uh, the secretary, but it's essentially a presumptive eligibility. So if you have a claim uh, filed, rather than them, uh, you know, uh, waiting to get all the information, uh, they're going to start expediting approvals based on a presumptive uh, uh, belief that you are eligible for those uh, benefits and then if they determine later that they're not then they can cancel them or, or avoid them but the reality is more people are entitled to them than aren't uh, and so rather than trying to prevent people who are we need to be helping uh, helping them so that's what's happening on the backlog issue um, and some updates on the um, issue of the VA uh, benefits um, uh, the VA hospital, you know, which we're very proud of uh, as the first uh, regional uh, VA hospital to be built in 17 years in the country, you know, it's, 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 it's a beautiful building and, and great new medical services. There have been delays in some of the function of that hospital. Uh, specifically, the emergency rooms are not yet open. They're doing some remodeling uh, because they got a savings from the budget when they were building it and some of the things that they should have put in from the beginning they're now going back and, and reinstalling so that once the emergence once the uh, surgical center opens it will be fully equipped and be able to accommodate more uh, uh, sur surgeries occurring in that facility uh, the nursing uh, facility um, it's not, that's not the term of it, I know they call it the, the living center, I believe, uh, but that is also not yet open. Uh, they're using it as administrative space, which I am uh, personally upset about because I think that they should have found other places to uh, have their administrative staff so that we can open that, and so we brought that issue up to Secretary Shinseki, and he is looking uh, to see what they could do to accommodate the administration so that they can open uh, the nursing home because we have <coughs> vets who you know are homeless or who are at home, home and they should be uh, receiving 24-hour medical care in that nursing home so we we are we are working on that issue um, I continue to remain uh, you know very concerned about the rural services uh, for veterans uh, throughout all the rural areas here in Pahrump, you know, we were uh, in Tonopah, heard concerns from veterans who, you know, have to drive four hours, depending on which direction, either the Reno or here, to, you know, go to an appointment because they don't have those services and because they have no form of transportation, many of them cannot get to that uh, service. So we, we have brought that to uh, the attention of the VA and are looking uh, for, for you know what options are available to help support uh, outreach um, in Urington and, and in the um, Lyon County uh, same concerns uh, a lack of dental uh, lack of um, uh, vision uh, you know under the veterans uh, uh, benefit health care plans uh, and the fact that those providers are not there and you again you have to go into Fallon or Fernley uh, or Reno uh, to receive those services. So, you know, one of the things that I've heard from all of the veterans throughout this district is, you know, we, we need to do a better job of getting rural support uh, to our veterans because many of our veterans do live in communities like Pahrump um, and we need to make sure that you are not forgotten um, and, and you're not uh, from my point of view. So we are here today to listen and to understand from you directly you know what more we can do uh, so i'm going to open it up if you have a question please feel free to, to ask it if i can't answer today i commit to you uh, my staff who's here uh, we're very responsive and, and we'll get you an answer as, as quickly as possible yes sir my name is kenneth shockley i'm the former director of uh, veteran services and something that i would like to personally see as you're probably familiar with, 
uh, Nye County was the only uh, county that had a veteran service office to take care of the benefits for, um, for our veterans here. Most of the other states in the United States have county veteran service officers. Um, it is not mandated here yes, to have it at the county level. It's only mandated at the state level, and they only have it in Las Vegas and up in Reno are the main uh, locations. I would like to see and work on possibly with you on creating a bill to see that it is mandated to have county veteran services, not only here in Nye County, but through the whole entire state of Nevada. And um, I know our veterans here, we have 9,000, close to 9,000 veterans just in Nye County alone and most of them are rural, and uh, from my experience doing this for seven years, having to travel uh, throughout Nye County, as, and Esmeralda, it has been very difficult to get all these veterans their services. So that's something that I would like to definitely approach and see if that's something that would be uh, taken up and possibly made mandated. Okay, thank you for that suggestion. Okay, thank you. Yes. My name is Lafayette Davis, and uh, <coughs> good to see you again. You, you took yeah, me to the wall. <laughs> how's, how's it coming? How are you? Fine, fine. I want to thank you very much for coming and talking to us. Um, I've never seen some. Uh, I've never seen any congressman come here and talk to us as you have. So I thank you very much for that. My question on this is that uh, there was a VA um, letter. Uh, the VA spending burial options in rural areas. And it said, uh, it said that under the rural initiative plan, VA would build small national veterans burial grounds <coughs> in existing public or private cemeteries in rural areas where the unserved veteran population is 25,000 or less within 75 miles of the uh, Black Polder City. Um, I followed through with this, and I was told that uh, Alton, Nevada was, uh, was uh, selected. My question is, who selected that person, I mean that, that town, when we have almost 9,000 residents here in Nye County? And is it only one who can be selected? No, it says here, um, it went to like uh, Wisconsin, Wyoming. The one in the state or Canada. one? But let's check and see, uh, you know, obviously, I don't know how Elko was selected or who selected them, but like you said, Perum yeah. sounds like would meet that criteria, and I know you all have been working very hard locally to, you know, honor and mm -hmm. um, recognize those veterans who live here right. and those who've passed on. So, I mean, I, I assume part of the request would be to get that type of a rural See. burial initiative for right. Perum. Right. right. I have a. I have a. a I have not brought this up to the town of Vermont or anything like this here. It says where, where <clears throat> the VA will buy, actually buy a uh, portion of a, of a cemetery. And we already have a block assigned to, to the veterans. And then we have, of course, on the other side, we have our memorial. Um, and any memorial that is built should be built within an area where there's burials so they can have their, their services and they put. So it's all there. All we need to do is, if they come through, is have the rest of our columbariums up and everything like this here. The next question. <laughs> uh, 